Okay, this is just a quick follow-up with like three short additional tips for thematic mapping. Uh, the first tip, and these are all tips I forgot to mention in the, in the main practicum video. The first tip is that when you're setting, for example, your symbol sizes, make sure you zoom in to approximately the same scale at which you're going to render your map in the print composer. Um, the simplest way to do that is just to visually zoom in so you're about looking at, like, let's say this is your survey square, or these two areas. The uh, more accurate way is to go down here and to set in a specific scale. So I just type 3000, 1 to 3000. And then you can match the scale between the map view and the print composer when you create your, your final map product. Because when you go in to the properties and you, for example, pick the stroke width over here, you know, in, in millimeters, and here I've got 0.66, you can just type in something bigger, like 3, uh, you can see it, it's too thick at this particular moment. And if I zoom out, it looks really too thick. Um, and the further out you're zoomed, the thicker it looks. So if I turn this to 2, and then we zoomed out, it looks really thick. But if I zoom back in precisely to 3000, hit enter, you know, it's not as bad. And if you're doing a classification, this could be the thickest that you might want to go. So that's tip number one. Tip number two, let's get back into there, is when we're doing our categorized or, you know, graduated, um, let's do graduated and I'll pick a numeric column and uh, let's do wall thickness, just hit classify. By default, you can see it's got decimal points, 40.000. And depending on the way you create your breaks, I showed you this before, you know, those are going to be in different places, depending on which one of these methods that you choose and how you, you do your, uh, you know, the number of breaks and that kind of stuff. But having the decimal points in this case is, is, is really not particularly useful. The legend will show them without, but you can also show them in here without by using this trim function up here. And you can increase the number <laughs> if you wanted, or you can decrease the number. And now both of these things are a little bit easier to see. And so if I click OK, um, and we click over here, and we look at our legend, just not in the print composer, but in the map view, um, we can get a much simpler uh, display of our breaks over here. Uh, so, that's tip number two. Tip number three, um, let's go ahead and, and make these sort of useful scales, there we go, uh, is going to be combining both size and color. Now you can only do this in, in, well you can do it better in graduated than you can do it in the other one. I guess you could probably do it in categorized too. Just to prove that I might be able to, let's take a look at that. Uh, let's categorize, actually you know what, I'm going to stick to my guns and say you can do this better in graduated because they're the numeric columns, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, get our basic classification over here. And if we look at it, again, that's the color scheme that we have here. To add a uh, uh, size dimension to this, what you have to do is uh, first c do the classification by color and then go here to where it says symbol and click the little arrow to get this thing and then hit configure symbol and you'll get a simple uh, a symbol settings dialog over here and then down here you have the width and you can set this all to be two millimeters which is what we've been doing or you can click this little thing over here and go to where it says assistant yeah it's kind of buried in there so again get your symbol settings find the where it says width and then find the little pull down and click on assistant and now you have to pick the column that you want to get your width from. Now technically you could pick a different column. So you could have color be on from one column and the width be from a second column. That can get confusing. It can be a little bit misleading. So if you're going to do that, I would say be very careful that the legend is clear when you do that. The better way to apply this is to simply use size and color to reinforce the same data trend. So in this case I'm going to click wall thickness because that's what we were using. Now by default you'll probably see values from 0 to 0 
and then size 1 to 10. So what you need to do is to increase this number, which is, uh, you know, the thickness of the walls. Now you can do it manually like this, or you can hit this little double arrows, and it will pull in the total range of values from the column that you've just selected. So here we have uh, all of them pulled in, and now we have to set our symbol sizes. Now you can play around with this. I know at this particular zoom level, at the 1 to 3,000, about 0.5 mil to about uh, 2 mil is going to give me a decent size range. Now, for some reason I chose white <laughs> for this colors of the line, so you're not seeing much here. But if you had chosen another color, let me just go quickly change the base color, something like red, like so. Uh, and then go back into here. Uh, you will actually see the gradation and thicknesses there. That's what I wanted to show you before. So now click OK and click OK. And we should get a gradation in size and in color. And we get that. So the white is the thinnest line and the red is the thickest line. And at 1 to 3,000, I think actually I could go even thicker. So if I go back into this, and again, i got to go up to my symbol, click the down arrow, configure symbol, find the width, click here, click on the assistant, and now I can change this. I could probably go a little narrower, let's say like 2.5, and maybe I could even go up to 3 mil thick. And click OK and OK. And now I'm getting a little bit more gradation in my symbol thicknesses. If I zoom out, you can see it kind of looks bad at the out, uh, you know, a coarser zoom scale. If I zoom in, you know, now I'm at 1 to 1500, and I'm looking pretty good. So if this was my final scale that I was going to print my map at, I'd be pretty happy with this. Um, and, you know, when you make your final print map, you know, you have to be a little bit careful about how these things show up in the legend. You may have to go manually in and adjust some stuff like we've shown before. But this little quick tip will let you get uh, a couple of reinforcing uh, symbology themes, both color and size. And it works with lines and it works with points pretty well too. So that's basically it. Just a couple of additional hints. Hopefully uh, those things will be useful.